In this video, we're going to talk about how to be more compassionate with yourself. And I'm going to share with you five self-acceptance exercises and self-kindness ideas. Hi, I'm Simona, certified life coach and author of the book 111 Ways to Simplify Your Life. I upload educational videos on personal development, so if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it to get notified when I upload a new video. Now, before we get into my five self-acceptance exercises that will help you be more compassionate with yourself, I want to briefly share with you my story. Self-acceptance is something I struggled with almost throughout my entire life. Growing up, I had this belief that I had to be more, do more, achieve more, to deserve love, affection, and attention. I strive to be number one at everything, and I was trying to be perfect. That constant need to outrun myself made me question my self-worth so many times that at some point I had to stop and re-examine my choices. I was choosing fear over love, criticism over self-acceptance, my accomplishments over my inherent worth as a human being. Which was a huge mistake for two reasons. One, I let external circumstances dictate the way I felt about myself. And two, I always felt like I wasn't good enough no matter what I did. So in this video, I want to share with you how to be more compassionate with yourself by trying out these five self-acceptance exercises. Now let's get into my first self-acceptance exercise. Question everything. This exercise is as simple as it sounds. From now on, I want you to question everything you think about yourself. Every belief, every mean comment, every bad inner voice that you hear. Now, before we get into the actual way to practice this exercise, I'm going to spend a few seconds answering one simple question. Why do we find it so hard to practice self-acceptance? The answer is surprisingly simple. Because we didn't receive the proper love and affection growing up. And we internalized the belief that we had to morph ourselves into whatever the other person needed us to be to feel loved. The truth is that we're suffering now as adults because we haven't allowed ourselves to properly express the pain of not getting the love we deserved. We don't give ourselves the love we desperately needed many years ago from our parents or primary caretakers. The truth is that we simply don't know how. By questioning everything, we will start to spot the difference between the healthy, helpful, realistic beliefs we have about ourselves and the toxic beliefs that we adopted from society, our families, teachers, and friends. So how can we do that? Well, the first thing we need to do is become aware of the thoughts that are going through our head on a daily basis. The most repetitive negative thoughts are the ones that form our beliefs we have about ourselves. For example, if you have beliefs such as, I'm ugly, I'm stupid, I'm a bad person, your mind will be constantly looking for evidence to prove that it's true, and we need to change that. We'll talk about reframing your mind later on in this video. But for now, let's talk about how to question these beliefs so you can take their power away. I want you to write down one of your core negative beliefs you have about yourself. Then, I want you to answer the following questions. Number one, is this a fact? Two, who is the first person I can think of who made me feel this way? Three, can I think of a particular situation, preferably growing up, when I experience shame, guilt, anger, or sadness related to this negative belief. 4. How is this belief currently showing up in my life? And 5. What is this belief preventing me from doing? By questioning the negative beliefs you have about yourself, you will be able to become aware of what's really going on in your head and detach yourself from it. You are not your thoughts. You're not your beliefs either. So who are you? Let's find out by trying out the second self-acceptance exercise. Get to know yourself better. Before you can start accepting yourself, you need to be aware of all of your strengths and weaknesses. If you're not used to being kind and compassionate with yourself, it's almost impossible to jump from self-criticism to radical self-acceptance. So let's start small. How can you get to know yourself better? I want you to pause and think for a second. When was the last time you spent an entire day by yourself, offline, without any distractions? And yes, that is the first thing that I'm going to recommend when it comes to getting to know yourself better. Every day, we're so distracted by social media, all the chaos in the world, the TV drama, and the old storylines that we've so comfortably adopted as true. I want you to forget about all of that for at least a few hours. The purpose of this exercise is very simple. I want you to come back to who you were before everyone else told you who you should be. For some of you, this may mean spending some quiet time in nature, Others will find the answers while they're meditating. The important thing is to spend these few hours by yourself without all the external noise. 
After you reconnect with yourself, rejuvenate and feel more grounded in the present moment, you can ask yourself the following questions. Number one, who am I? Describe yourself in a few words. Try to be as elaborate as you can. Teach the ordinary labels such as a spouse, mother, entrepreneur. I want you to dig deeper. Who are you, really? Be honest with yourself. Two, what are my top three strengths? Three, what are my top three weaknesses? Four, what did I enjoy doing as a child? Five, in what ways am I too critical towards myself? Six, what small first step can I take to be kinder to myself today? By getting to know your strengths and your weaknesses and the most common negative loops that you fall into, you will learn how to be more compassionate with yourself. Now, let's get into the next self-acceptance exercise. Let it all out. This sounds so simple, right? But I would argue that it's probably one of the most difficult things you can do, especially if you felt numb for years. If sometimes you feel empty inside, I would definitely recommend listening to episode 108 from the Simplify Your Life podcast. I will leave a link to it in the description box below. Now, how do you practice this exercise? You need to stop bottling up your aggression, sadness, or other difficult feelings inside. We all feel frustrated, overwhelmed, or angry sometimes. The problem is that if you're not compassionate with yourself, that is a clear sign that you're either repressing your feelings or you feel guilty every time you express them. So I want you to learn to let them all out. Note that I'm not saying to start screaming at your partner or crying to your colleagues at work. These are your feelings. They're your responsibility. So you need to spend some time alone and figure out what's going on inside. One of the easiest ways to let them out is to listen to angry or sad music. You can also watch a movie, write down everything that's been on your mind lately, or simply sit in silence and let them come to the surface. While it's important to know where your feelings are coming from, there may be certain times where you feel sad or angry and you have no idea why. That's okay. After all, that's part of being human. The fourth self-acceptance exercise is to stop letting the past determine your future. What do I mean by this? If you're having the same thoughts every day, that would lead to the same feelings, the same behaviors, and the same beliefs. And you can't expect to change your state if you keep finding yourself in the same negative thinking loops, right? So this self-acceptance exercise is all about centering yourself into the present moment. When you think about it, the past is already gone and we can't predict the future. So the most effective way to navigate into the world is to focus on the present. There are many practices that you can try, but I'm gonna focus on asking yourself one simple question to bring yourself back to reality whenever you feel like your mind is racing. What do I need right now? Answering this question will lead to two very important outcomes. First, it will help you tune into your body to identify what your needs are right here, right now. And second, it will shift your focus from your inner monologue back to the present moment. By identifying your needs and taking the necessary steps to take care of them, you will not only start accepting yourself, but you'll also start accepting the present moment without resisting it. Actually, the number one reason we're trying to escape the present moment is because we're not happy with it. So think about your needs, because believe it or not, they're the actual reason why you feel unhappy. It's not your partner, your job, or anything else from the external world. All you need to do is focus on yourself and learn to listen. Now, if you haven't watched my previous two videos on how to practice self-love and how to take better care of yourself, I will leave links to them in the description box below. The next self-acceptance exercise is to reframe the beliefs you have about yourself. We mentioned in the first self-acceptance exercise to question everything. Then we focused on letting your feelings out. And now it's time to bring it all full circle by learning how to reframe your negative beliefs so you can be more compassionate with yourself. Here's how to practice reframing negative beliefs. Write down all the negative beliefs you have about yourself in one column and think of some new ones that are more aligned with your truth and more grounded in reality. I'm gonna give you a few examples. Let's say in the first column, you write the following belief, I'm ugly. Now, in the second column, you can write something like, I'm so much more than my appearance. No one is perfect. Also, I like my smile. Another example, let's say your negative belief is, I'm a failure. You can reframe it by writing down something like, every mistake that I make helps me grow and evolve as a person. Or let's say you're often thinking to yourself, I can't do this. In the second column, you can write down something like, I'm strong and capable. I've overcome many challenges in the past and I'll do it again. 
All of the exercises in this video are just a small portion of the self-love toolkit where I share with you my best tools on how to practice self-acceptance. If you want to try out more journaling prompts, loving yourself exercises, 365 ideas to take better care of yourself, self-compassion worksheets, and a lot of other amazing bonuses, head over to www.theselflovetoolkit.com. So far in this video, we talked about how to be compassionate with yourself and I shared with you five self-acceptance exercises and self-kindness ideas. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because in the next video, we're going to talk about how to enjoy your own company. And I'm going to share with you my best tips on how to feel good by yourself. In the meantime, make sure to check out these two videos next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.